Okay. Let me just get myself together. Yes, may the fourth be with you all. <laughs> Nerd joke. Okay, Mr. In Stitches, you can take us to the craft room table. I've got uh, my basket ready to go. I spent a little time at the end of yesterday's live stream. Um, I stopped crocheting when I stopped with all of you, but I took the opportunity to wind up some of my yarn because, you know, this one was getting all knotted. Look how much of this one I have left. I thought I had way more of this. So that's a surprise. I will obviously be replacing this yarn. So you can all help me which one I'm going to replace this yarn with. I've got my extra yarn over here and I'm ready to go. Welcome to a Thursday afternoon live stream. I'm so glad you guys could make it. This is the fourth day in a row we've been working on our big beautiful basket. Um, Ellie, we've got a pattern and a tutorial um, on this particular basket. This is our big beautiful basket. We'll link the original tutorial uh, down below or in the description box or somewhere. So if you want to see the whole thing from start to finish, we do have a full tutorial on it. I am about, oh, I don't know, about one third of the way done. I don't really feel like it's half yet, um, but I've got to, what row am I on everybody? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm halfway through row 21. So if that helps, uh, the video tutorial will be linked. And we have a pattern for it in our Etsy shop. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start crocheting while I'm chit-chatting here. I see a lot of you talking about having made a basket, having just finished one. I know Cinnamon said she was working on hers today, so that's awesome. I hope everybody's are turning out really, really nicely. I'm still delighted with how this mess of yarn <laughs> turns into the prettiest bit of fabric. Um, I haven't done any warming up yet today, so I've got to get my get my crojo going here, and hopefully, hopefully, I can get to row 30 today. So I'm halfway through row 21. I think that might be a tall order, but we shall see, because I do have to pause and tie in a couple of balls of yarn for sure. How is everybody doing? We've still got rain and overcast skies and a bit of wind here. Um, so definite spring weather, weather, wetter. Yeah, that's subconscious. It's wetter already. <laughs> we are zipping along. I, I am motivated today. I want to get a good chunk of this basket done. Tomorrow is Friday. Oh my goodness. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Connie, Connie Hall, thank you so much for gifting a membership, and Cecilia has won it. Well, that's a lovely way to start the day. Thank you so much. We uh, posted something for the family members, a few things actually, in the last couple days. So if you're new to the family, you'll see uh, anything that is, uh, all posts for family and subscribers go in the community tab. They always start there. And um, if there's anything important sort of off-site, we always have a link there if it's relevant. Uh, so the community tab is accessible on our YouTube homepage. You just click on the name Jada and Stitches. It'll take you there. And then just click on the community tab and you can see all of the posts. If you're using an Apple iPad, you have to use your Safari browser. Log into YouTube using your Safari browser, not the YouTube app, in order to see that. That's the workaround for that. I obviously have to tie in a new ball of yarn. So if you all remember, this was this is the tail end of that 1970s kind of self-striping brown, orange, yellow, pink thing. So um, I need to replace it. I'm tying in. Here's what I've got. These are what I think I should replace it with. So I've got this really pretty, um, what is this, like a rich kind of wine color. It's a size five and technically this is a size five. So weight weight wise, this would be a good one to replace it with. And I am eager to use it. Um, but I also have this nice bright orange, which I'm beginning to think might look really good uh, worked into this basket since the other orange and yellow sort of looked nice there. I also have this peachy color. So we're going to do a poll right after I thank Nico <laughs> for gifting a membership to Anna Victoria. Thank you so much. Goodness gracious, you guys. 
Thank you so much, Mr. and Stitches. I'm assuming you're on top of that. I'm doing my best. <laughs> Mr. and Stitches is down the well today, as usual, and uh, <laughs> he, sounds, he sounds a little more distant than normal. Uh, do you have a spare moment to do a poll, Mr. and Stitches? I do. Okay. So uh, I have to replace that crazy self-striping 1970s yarn. Which one am I going to replace it with? The wine, the peach, or the orange? Ms. Rabbit, what have you got to say here? I'm holding five strands and a 10 millimeter hook. It's probably going to have shallow sides so that I can put it on the desk for the girls to lay in. Oh, that's going to be and so Emily cute. And Emily just above hers. Okay. That's, oh, hi, Emily. I lost my crojo for a year and a half. Oh, been there. So glad to have it back and to be crocheting with you instead of just watching. Well, we're really glad you're here and crocheting too. I know. I've lost it too. I've lost my crojo before. It's a bit of a bummer, but um, I find if, I'm, if I want to crochet, but I just don't have the oomph to crochet, um, I try to think about things that aren't normally something you would crochet <laughs> and then try and crochet one. Sometimes like a weird sort of artistic challenge kind of helps knock me out of my stupor. How's that uh, poll coming, Mr. Sidges? Okay, so what color should I replace my yarn with? I've got three options. Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> Wine, peach, or orange? Wine, peach, orange. Mm -hmm. And we will be, a, this will be a short poll. So the second he gets that poll activated, everybody please weigh in. I want to tie in whatever new bowl you all, or new scheme you all vote on and then keep going. Poll is up. All right. I've got, uh, I feel I, I was originally, I originally took these two colors out of my spare, uh, the sort of the, the yarns I was thinking about using up for this basket. I originally took them out because I didn't think they really, thought they were like a bit too wild. But now that I see this coming together, I, I put them back in. And I actually, oddly, like all three of those together. Um, now I cannot substitute in all three for a single ball of yarn, but I could end up substituting some of these in for other yarns down the road. Um, I do have only a little bit of left this left, so I will be replacing it possibly today. I'm going to have a little sip of my tea. All right, Mr. Insidious, how many votes on the poll? Um, we have 83. 83. Okay, we'll give it another 10 seconds. Everyone who voted in the chat, it doesn't Oh yeah, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Sitcha says if you if you cast your vote by by typing in the chat, it doesn't count. So make sure you use the poll. <laughs> you have to tap on the blue bar above the chat. Oh yeah, Mr. Sitcha says there's a blue bar at the top of the chat. That's what you have to tap on. Dale, it sounds like you're having a bit of a rough time. I hope you uh, I hope you feel better soon. I'm really eager to tie this ball into something. I'm just sort of like standing here stroking it. Uh, we've got 95 votes. All right. We'll, we'll try and get to 100 votes. Five more votes. 97. <laughs> Tanya said the poll disappeared on her. <laughs> Try refreshing the page, Summer. 99 votes. 99, oh my goodness. One more. Yes, Deborah, I hid the foghorn. <laughs> All right, I'm ending it. All right, the poll is finishing, and I'm going to find out what I'm using here. 47% for the wine, close with 39 for the orange, 13 for the peach. The wine has it. All right, everybody, thank you for voting. And here I go. I am just going to use a very simple knot, nothing fancy, because the knot is small, the yarns are thick, and I'm going to work right over top of that. Ooh, I've been looking forward to using that. Let's hope that it continues to make this basket look nice. And off I go. I am trying to crochet a little quicker than normal, but I have to pay attention to my tension. I want to make sure that I keep a nice tight tension because I want a stiff basket.
Hey, Kim. There we go. Yes, working over top of those little two tails, they are going to just disappear in to the rest of this basket. And I'm going to see how much of a difference this switch up from that variegated or self-striping yarn. It's more of a self-striping yarn. Ooh, what have I done here? That's funny. Looks like I twisted my hook. Okay, let's tie that back up. And over top. There we go. There we go. All right, all done. Pass the knot, pass the little tails. Off I go. Oh, I'm really happy to be using that wine. I really love that rich color. And it's been sitting there staring at me, not doing anything for so long. That is row 21 complete. I'm going to get a couple of stitches past my marker. I'll put it back in and I'm starting row 22, making progress. That feels good. Maybe a glass of wine with the wine might with the wine yarn might make it grow faster. Deborah, that could that could be a, a good good theory. If I had wine, I might try. I don't have any wine in the house. Uh, which sounds like some kind of a of an infraction. <laughs> Here I go. Uncle Steve, hello and hello. Thank you so much for the little super chat. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Welcome, everybody. How many of you have made it to all four of these basket crochet alongs so far this week? This is uh, got to be the first time we've done this four days in a row. I think the most we've done in a row so far was three, if I'm not mistaken. Hi, Lulu. <laughs> Ms. Rabbit fell asleep yesterday. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I did. If I, I did hide the foghorn. <laughs> Nico. Nico, thank you for gifting another membership, and Kim has won it. Awesome. Right. Uncle Steve says he's working, not lurking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all four. Well, a lot of you have done all four. This is great. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Only been to two. <laughs> That's perfectly all right. Uncle Steve, thank you for gifting a membership. And Brittany has won it. Awesome. I do like a good cup of tea. I have to agree with Emily. I don't prefer it over coffee. I do like my tea in the afternoon, though. Speaking of, I am sipping on an Earl Grey. That's bag in because I like it strong. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thursday, Thursday night. Hey, you know what? Tomorrow is Friday. It's the first Friday in May. And that means it's Fair Isle Friday. <laughs> I'm so excited, guys. Oh, my gosh. Big delay on Mr. Stitches is going to troll you all. But I swear we are not planning on, on <laughs> delaying tomorrow's video. Welcome, everybody. I feel good about the basket today. It's at that size where I can kind of, um, it it turn it's easily turns on my work table. So as I'm as I'm sort of single crocheting, and and moving along my yarn, the bat the basket is kind of almost feels like it's turning on its its own right in front of me, like a little like it's on a wheel or something. I love this part. This is where it actually is less difficult to manage than I feel it's a little more difficult to manage at the beginning when you're you know working the increases you're doing the post row public announcement in the chat, public announcement in the chat. The you are a troll Mr. and Stitches he's just trolling you all <laughs> it's not like me I'm uh-huh I am. Oh, okay. Uh, the hook size is a nine millimeter. Um, yes, that's a good thing to recap. I'm using a nine millimeter. The original. 
also made these using an eight millimeter. It just depends on how tight you can get your tension. Nine millimeter worked with the yarns I've chosen. I'm using four strands held together. The original tutorial calls for three, but you can use as many or as few as you need, depending on the weight category. Um, the colors are these horrible, well, maybe not the, the, the wine isn't so bad, but the, the most of them are these really boring black colors that I've had in my, uh, my yarn stash for, in some cases, 30 years. I mean, how embarrassing is that? And I just had to it so many of them um so it, and it doesn't matter the nice thing about working on these these um baskets or these crazy scrap blankets is that the more crazy and clashy the yarns are they can be variegated self-striping solid colors like these ones the more wildly like non-matching they are the better somehow the basket turns out oh my gosh we're having audio issues Okay, uh, well, if um, you guys want to just reload the, the video, just in case, because um, it looks okay on it's this end. It's, um, it's a lot of people, so it might be our internet. There. Peggy said she closed it and reopened it, and everything seems fine again. So it could be just uh, closed and came back, and it's okay now. Yeah, so everybody just, um, just close it and then reopen the stream, and that should fix it it's it's kind of the oldest joke in the tech the tech book if you turn it off and then on again that usually fixes most problems i'll just have a little sip of my tea while you all do that heather says she went out and back in and it's still choppy okay mr and stitch is just going to check a couple things make sure I'm just going to continue working on my my row here. Okay, okay, Melissa says it's fine now. And Susan says it's fine now. Bionic Ear is uh is eager to get the squirrels kicked out. <laughs> Victor says he went out in and out and now it works. One is good now. I went in and out, working fine now. Okay, good. Shan just refreshed. Better, fine now. Okay, great. Super duper. Okay. <laughs> in a meeting is sign up again. Mela, nice. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're we're back up and running, mister. Just a little squirrel. Just a little squirrel. Speaking of little squirrel, we saw one of our little squirrels today. He's missing his his winter fur is all starting to come out, and he looks like an absolute disaster. He, he looks like a, a well used rug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Susan, you are more than welcome. I am so happy to be able to sit here and hang out with you all while I, I make another basket. I love being able to talk baskets with everybody. I just love talking crochet with everybody. Yarn crochet. I could. I could talk about this stuff until the cows come home. I just love it. And, you know, to be per perfectly fair, I'm really excited to be making projects along with everybody that I need. Like, I really do need another one of these baskets. Um, I have to to upsize the, the container that I'm keeping my uh, Fair Isle style blanket in. And we're five months in. Uh, the fifth edition is sitting there on the, the chair behind me. And I need a bigger basket to keep it in because the little thing that it started in, it's fully outgrown now. So this is going to hang on to my calendar blanket for the rest of the year once it's done. All right, that is row 22 complete. Oh, make a good progress starting row 23. Yay. And I think I've done about a whole row with the new wine color. And I'm going to say that was just the best option to choose, everybody. You can really see, if I hold this sideways, actually I can squish it, you can really see um, that original self-striping yarn, kind of almost the pooling, like there's like a stripe of the brown and a stripe of the yellow and the orange and then the pink and then the brown again. And we've now morphed into that rich wine color, which will hopefully give me a little bit of a subtle stripe for as long as it lasts. I like it. I think it looks great.
Regina asks, do you have any tutorials on half hexagons? No, but we do have one planned, Regina. Um, I have had that on my list for quite a while, and I do want to get to that sooner rather than later. Actually, there's a lot of things I want to get to sooner rather than later. I, I need like 10 extra sets of hands and heads. <laughs> yes, Claire, if the arthritis won't let you hold more than a couple of strands, then uh, just do what you can and use the tiny little, um, use the smaller hook to help you with the nice tight tension, just so you're not, you know, outsourcing that to your wrists or your fingers. Um, and if you, you know, still feel it's painful, just take a break for a while. I have to do that too. I'm lucky. I've been okay the last couple of days. Um, my wrist feels a little stronger. It's actually more the the uh, the tendon that runs into my my finger that's been giving me the trouble. But um, you know, if I do this for an hour with everybody, it's usually fine. And it's standing up on its own. So I feel like I'm managing to keep a pretty decent tension here. That makes me happy. I would absolutely not mind doing a half hexagon tutorial. Um, and I'll do it to match um, the hexagons that we've done here. Because uh, we've got two, two different hexagons. Actually, we've got several hexagons. But um, I'm thinking of the, the, the granny-ish ones. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a couple of them. I do, I do have it written down. It's amazing how fast a week goes by. Uh, we usually try to plan out our tutorials several weeks in advance um, because we're we're kind of busy. We want to make sure that we stay as organized as possible. And of course, we've got the calendar blanket occurring monthly, first Friday of the month. Um, so that's always like one Friday. Um, we had we did two tutorials last week. We did the the zigzag kind of wrap up, the zigzag join wrap up. I feel like I've missed a no, I haven't. Oh my gosh, where did I run out of that yarn? Did anybody see where I last ran? Oh, there it is all the way back here. Oh, this is painful. Oh my gosh, how much do I have to take out? Boo! Oh my gosh, all that way. Look, look, I, I, I ran out. I was not paying attention. I ran out of that uh, plum yarn. It just quietly stopped, quietly ended, and I didn't even notice. That's how skinny and soft it is. Okay, so I have another ball of yarn to replace. It's that plum, that soft plum. Let's pick a yarn to replace it with. I have got another soft yarn, this peach. Um, I could use the orange. I also have a lilac. So I had kind of earmarked a few colors. Um, so I was thinking originally I would replace the plum with the lilac, which isn't so bad. Mr. Stitches, I think we're going to do a poll. Mr. Stitches is on strike. How are you on strike? You have a bowl of snacks. <laughs> you got a bowl of snacks and a cup of coffee. I, I think you should uh, be more than happy down there. Okay, lilac plum. Mm -hmm. and... No, it's uh, we're replacing the plum oh. with with either lilac, peach, or orange. Um, lilac, peach, or orange. Yeah. Now the, the the benefits of the of the peach is that it's the same fluffy skinny nonsense that this this soft fluffy uh plum was so it would be kind of like replacing the same same we're replacing this color but with the same exact kind of yarn so that's one thing that's the peach the orange is just sort of like the wild card in this scenario and then i had originally thought um that the lilac might be a nice kind of replacement for the plum so We'll leave it up to you guys again. I'm replacing the plum. You can choose whether I use the lilac or the orange or the peach or whatever order they, they are there. I can't believe I got that many stitches passed without realizing I had stopped using it. All of a sudden, it felt like a lot thinner and easier to manage. I'm like, wow, I'm really motoring here. Oh, <laughs> turn it off. Oh, how long have I had a whip waiting to be finished? Hmm, how long have I had a whip waiting to be finished? Well, I mean, are we going to talk intergenerational whips? Because I have a couple from my grandmother that require finishing that haven't been finished yet. Now, I didn't start them, um, but they're old. <laughs> um, so there's those. <laughs> there's a new hashtag going around. Oh. Free, free the foghorn. 
Oh, come on. My ears are still ringing from last night. Uh, I, what? I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people voting for the lilac here. So I'm eager to see what the poll comes back with. So the ones I started. Okay, Mela. Um, how long? Well, let's see. I've got I've got one currently on the go that I know is at least as old as I can't remember the year we did the Mario Grafgan video, but I started a second Grafgan after we completed that video because I liked how the Mario Grafgan came out. It's so cute. Um, and I started one immediately after that, which I still have waiting for its background squares. So however long ago that video was, that's how old that whip is. Um, and I think, I think that's the only one, or at least that's the oldest that I started. Poll's coming in. Poll's coming in. All right. What am I going to use? <laughs> lilac 47 percent orange 28 peach 23 okay lilac it is nice choice everybody i will tie this in yeah i love that that was going to be my choice but uh i always like to know what everybody else has to say there is genius amongst the crowd all right and off we go again and i will Cover up that little knot, cover up those little tails, and I will hide them easily in all of this yarn. And we've got two yarns replaced so far. Love it. Oh, I'm using up so much yarn. I just love it. These yarns, not that individually they're not like, I think that's a very pretty lilac, um, but you know, individually they're boring and I don't know what to do with them. And I've had them so long. So, and of course, right off the bat I've got a bit of a knot here oh no you don't no you do not there we go haha -ha. beat that one everybody's talking about lilac how do I sound funny when I say lilac lilac that's how I say it but I'm Canadian I don't know you say lilac? Yes. But it does it's not spelled L O C K. It's L A C lac. That's how I pronounce it. So okay, well here's here's the thing. I say lilac, lac, L A C lac because uh lac L A C is pronounced lac in Quebec. So lac um that's lake, right? So I say lilac. 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 Yeah. Lilac. Everybody I everybody I know says lilac. I don't think anybody I've never actually, I don't think you, I typically hear you use that word, mister. <laughs> I think I've said it four times in my life. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it's one of my favorite flowers and one of my favorite colors. I love that color. Um, lilac and lavender are pretty much the same. It's probably, you usually say lavender, sweetie. Lavender, yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't we plant a bunch of them? The, the lilac Did we? Trees? Yeah, we planted some lilac trees. So I've said it more than four times. So you have said it more than four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question, Uncle Steve. Are there any French speakers here? Anyone parle français? Claire says, I say lilac, maybe a Canadian thing. I, I guess so, Claire. And I'm I'm gonna assume it's because of the whole lac, LAC thing. I don't know. So there's a there's a mixture of lilac and lilac. So some people say lilac, which is cute. They pronounce the AC awk as opposed to ack. And some of us say ack. Well, you know what? I I mean pronunciation is so funny that I I I I never thought too much about pronunciation i mean i guess where you you grow up where you grow up and everyone around you pretty much sounds the same and then you you know you start traveling and and you you know you, you meet people with accents and then you meet people who say words differently um my grandfather always said italian which i never understood because nobody else i knew said italian they all say italian but he always said italian i remember once i, I was sitting there as a little kid and i looked at him i said grandpa why do you say italian you don't say idly <laughs> he just looked at me like shut up kid <laughs> I love it. This is a real 
It's like tomato, tomato. This is so fun. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not bilingual, Rita, but, um, but Mr. and Stitches is, but not with French. Um, I actually, not so long ago, was bilingual German, but I, I wouldn't consider myself bilingual German anymore because I just haven't used it enough to stay, uh, to stay abreast of the. So I can still understand what's being said, but I, I can't speak it very well anymore. <laughs> Best friend started saying lilac to annoy you, and now it's a habit. <laughs> Guten Tag, Linda, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, German, Georgie. Yes, the mister is Italian. Oh, he sounds like somebody you know who's part Italian. No kidding. Oh, there you go. well, well, well. The, cat is out of the, bag. the uh, the the very slick cat is out of the bag. Yeah. <laughs> With a piece of pizza. With a piece of pizza. Meatball. <laughs> With a meatball. <laughs> and some nice the sauce. Yeah. Oh, I love languages. I wish I could speak them all. I I absolutely love love. I love it when people can can just sort of snap between languages. I have I have friends who are are um, truly bilingual French English, and they have no accent in either language. And they they it's it's like it's just like flipping their hand back and forth. It's so easy for them to snap in and out of. And I, I've always envied that so much because I just I just love listening to people, you know, switch from one language to another. It's just it just sounds so cool. My little thing fell off. Okay, that is right here that is the start of my row don't want to lose that Gifted membership. oh my goodness what did i miss what did i miss nico thank you thank you for gifting a membership and crochet crazy has won it how very appropriate <laughs> You're crochet crazy. i am crochet crazy Mr. Insist I stole his foghorn, Georgie. My ears are still ringing from yesterday. <laughs> oh, Melissa, I know my number's in Japanese too, but that's because I studied karate for a while and um, they, they, they spoke everything in, in Japanese. So that's the only reason I know my number's in Japanese. <laughs> All right, what did I just finish? Was that row 23, 11? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I just finished row 23. All right. I'm going to get two row, two stitches past my, my little start. And I will put my thing back in there. Oh, how neat. Barbara's got a great nephew living in Germany. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> All right, where was I? Get my hook going in here. Oh, I should have a sip of my tea. Whenever I get into this basket and I get chatting with you guys, I completely neglect my tea. And by the time I get around to drinking it, it's cold. I don't want cold tea. <laughs> Peggy speaks pig Latin. <laughs> I can I can read a lot of languages. Like I think if a language is sort of written down in front of me, I do pretty well. Um, I can I can read I can read and understand French if I get a chance to read it. I don't always understand it when I'm hearing it spoken. Uh, it, and that, that also depends on the accent. Um, and I'm pretty good sort of understanding what I'm looking at if I'm reading Italian or if I'm if I'm reading German. Um, it's just that I I just don't have the confidence to speak it. I probably would. I probably would be able to stumble through several of those languages if I really had to, but I, I just don't, you know, I just don't want to say the wrong thing or, you know, not sound absolutely clear, I guess. 
Nico's fluid and cat. <laughs> Don says she speaks English and crochet. Yes. <laughs> I definitely speak crochet. Oh, wow. Laura learned some Russian. That's a cool language. I almost had the opportunity to learn that in uh, in school, but unfortunately, I couldn't get that class. It conflicted with my, my schedule. I, I, lo I, I love languages. I wish I could speak them all. I love how they all sound. I love how 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 similar some of them are and how incredibly different others are. I, it's just fascinating to me. Communication is fascinating to me. I think that wine, the size five, was a good replacement because I don't feel like now that I've switched out two different yarns, I don't feel like the strands I'm manipulating feel any thicker or thinner than what I was doing before. So that's kind of nice. That means that the basket isn't going to suddenly have a, a change in thickness. Not that I think I would have minded. I kind of think that looks cool too. But this is not somehow managing to sort of maintain its, its uh, you know, aggregate weight category which I'm, I'm quite pleased about and it feels like it's it's kind of firming up so either I've got better tension today or these two new yarns are helping make things much tighter so that's great And what did I say I was on? Am I on row 24? I think so. I'm halfway through row 24. Everybody's chatting about the languages they speak. This is great. We're a, we're a global community, so I would imagine that between us all, we probably have a good chunk of languages covered. <laughs> Oh, can we see the lilac working out in the basket yet? Yeah, great question. Hang on, let me get a couple more stitches done. I think I've gone around a couple couple rows. Yeah, I've got it in a couple rows now. How visible is that? Can you see sort of this area right here, these two rows? Maybe I'll hold it up a little higher. Mister, how does that look? Does that look okay? Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's just, it's just the subtlest change. I think it was the right choice to replace the plum with it. I'm using a size nine millimeter hook, Donna. But whatever hook works with the yarns you kind of try to hold together to get the tightest tension possible, that's the one you want to use. It's uh, it's very, very subtle. Uh, we'll get a few more rows in and we'll see how it looks. Yeah, it does go from warmer to cooler. That's uh, that's a good observation. It kind of it does have that kind of look to it. I don't know, but yet somehow the the hues still all kind of go with each other. I don't know. I, this is just a, a an interesting little little uh, color adventure. This basket. <laughs> there's a new uh, there's a new pronunciation coming out. Pecan or pecan. Pecan or pecan. Oh, I definitely say pecan. Again, can. Yeah, <laughs> pecan or pecan. I know pecan sounds so nice, but I don't say pecan. I say pecan. Pecans. You get a few rows past the... Um... <laughs> I cannot speak... Uh, a lot of Welsh, Shan, but I do know some, which is why I know how to pronounce your name properly. Um, my grandmother was Welsh and my great grandfather spoke it fluently. Um, so I, I know a, just a teensy weensy little bit, enough to know that it doesn't sound like anything else on the universe. <laughs> Very important poll. Mr. and Stitches has put up a new poll. Very important. Seventy-two votes so far. Seventy-two votes. It's it's a, it's, it's a popular poll. Uh, it's a close one, is it? Yeah. P 
pecan, pecan, pie can. <laughs> Welsh was compulsory for you, Caroline. Wow. I'm sorry I don't speak that. I wish I, I wish I did speak that one fluently. So does my grandmother. She's kind of upset that her father didn't teach her that, but um, he didn't he just didn't see the point. He figured, wow, our life is in Canada now. We speak English here. And I'm I've always kind of felt bad that that was his attitude because I think it's such a beautiful language. And I think fewer and fewer people speak it fluently every year. It's like um Scottish Gaelic is also. Um, kind of a, a slowly dying language. It's a lot of these, a lot of really awesome languages around the world are slowly disappearing because fewer and fewer people speak them at home or speak them, you know, at school or at work because in in sort of in favor of speaking a more commonly adopted language. There's a lot of them that are on their way out. <clears throat> Mr. and Stitches, how's that poll going? Okay, right. I'm ready. What's the poll say? Question marks. <laughs> pecan, 56%. Pecan, 47%. Well, how about that? Um, we should take a handful of questions about the project. Sure. We'll, uh, wrap it up. I'd love to take a handful of questions. If anybody's got questions about the project today or anything else, maybe uh, any questions about the Fair Isle style project, since that's coming out tomorrow. I'd like to learn Gaelic, Scottish, Scottish Gaelic too, Cami. That's, uh, that's another big wing of my family are all Scots, Highlanders. Crochet or crochet? Oh, that's a good question, Linda. Any hints on tomorrow's project? Um, mm, can I give you a hint that doesn't give it away? Huh. I would love to see your guesses. Uh, let's do that. If you want to guess, <laughs> I would love to see what you all think might show up as tomorrow's Fair Isle style. <laughs> Can't give it away, though. I'm aiming, I got to do up to row 30 here, Trina, um, before I put in the basket handles. So I'm... <laughs> Becky wants you to come please. What's tomorrow's time? <laughs> <laughs> not happen. No, we gotta wait for tomorrow for the full reveal. Got a few I am looking at them. I'm looking at them. I love it. I love it. The uh, the video will be up tomorrow at. Uh, we're hoping we're aiming for 10:30 a.m. Eastern. That's typically when we put up our tutorials on Friday, but it might be just a smidgen bit later because. Be, be, well, before noon, hopefully Eastern. Um, but yeah. Oh, you're just being such a troll. Um, it's uh, we we like to make sure that it's it's uh, absolutely perfect before it, it uh, goes. So, uh, but we we are aiming for the usual uh, Friday morning time slot. Oh, look at all of these these guesses coming in. I love it. What is Fair Isle, says Charlie. Fair Isle style. So Fair Isle is a style of knitting from the Fair Isle. And it's a kind of a concept of repeating mirror imagery and usually only two colors or so are carried. So that's kind of uh, repeating it, mirror image graphs and usually one or two ca colors carried. Those are kind of the hallmarks of Fair Isle style knitting. Um, it's very similar to what a lot of people know as Scandinavian style. Uh, the two are very similar because the Fair Isles and the sort of the Scandinavian um, uh, coast are close together. And those uh, for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, the fishermen sort of inter interacted with each other. So it's obvious that, you know, certain styles are going to kind of um, wear off on each other. So those two things are very similar. Um, I I know Scandinavian knitting to be usually sort of two colors. Like, um, like if I were doing 
the Fair Isle style blanket in a Scandinavian style, I probably would have gone with a white background and a red color for all of my graph work. Uh, maybe blue, but usually I think of Scandinavian as sort of a two, two thing, like white and red or white and blue. And um, Fair Isle can really move through the colors. The Fair Isle, like if you look at Fair Isle knitting sweaters, um, but more to the point, it's repeating uh, mirror image sort of graph work. So uh, that's what the Fair Isle uh, style means uh, because we're using crochet and we're having some fun, a little bit of uh, poetic license with the concept, but that's definitely where the inspiration came from. I'm still looking at everybody's guesses here. There, um, there don't seem to be too many questions about the project. That's fine. I know everybody's much more interested in what tomorrow's uh, graph is going to be. <laughs> I have got one more, sleep. One, more sleep. one more sleep. I've got um, when did I first crochet something? I was probably 15, Deborah. I think 14 or 15. I don't quite remember, but I, I learned how to knit when I was 11. Um, and I taught myself how to crochet a couple years later, but I remember first crocheting, uh, my actual first completed something was a terrible hat that I loved and wore all the time. Oh, look at these guesses. These are so cute. <laughs> Wonderful, Mipsby. It's nice to have you here. Hi, Shell. <laughs> oh, I love these. I love these. I love these guesses. Lala. Hi, Lala. It is lovely to see you here, too. Thank you very much. I'm having fun with this basket. Yes. So tomorrow we will have um, the Fair Isle style May pattern i'm being very careful with my wording here available for you uh, that'll be the video up tomorrow we're going to take a break from the live streams um just so everybody can catch up with the fair isle blanket um the baskets the basket patterns are going to be on sale on the etsy shop i think today and tomorrow tomorrow's the last day and we're also going to have a little flash sale on our fair isle pattern so if you you sort of just kind of come to the project and you're catching up you'll uh, you'll find the fair isle the main fair isle patterns on sale in the etsy shop for i think they start today and then go through the weekend so if you want to add them to your collection then uh, this is a good time to pick them up and thank you thank you to everybody who does um we will make sure that we've got the tutorial for the main basket linked somewhere below so if you're making one along with me oh goodness gracious that's that scared the daylights out of me lisa thank you <laughs> thank you lisa <laughs> Nico also gifted another oh nico thank you for gifting another membership oh my goodness who won let me let me back up i've been so busy staring at my work here Car Carly, Carly won. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Uh, there will not be a live stream for the basket tomorrow, Victor. We're going to do the, um, the Fair Isle Blanket video will be up tomorrow instead. I'm going to take a little break um, to give my, my wrists a little break. Plus, I know a lot of people don't want to feel overwhelmed if you're you know trying to do 100 different things like, oh, goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Alex, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for picking up a pattern. Super sticker. Oh my goodness, and a super sticker. I am just trying to, Lala, thank you. Aw, that is so cute. Oh my gosh, look at these guesses. Oh, you guys. Don't, uh, don't say yay yeah, or nay, they're trying to trick us. You guys, you're gonna, oh. They're trying to trick us into giving away valuable gifts. Uh, oh my gosh, hey wow, I just finished another yarn. Look how quickly that one disappeared. Oh. All right, we've got to do a poll. I've got to, I've got to replace this. This ran out a lot faster than I thought. Alex, Alex was the last person. Oh, I'm, I'm loving these. Uh, I'm absolutely loving. Okay, so we won't do a poll on the color. Just scream out in the chat what you want me to replace the wine with. I've got the orange, the peach, and completely left field, this minty kind of gray. So 
we're going to get away from the rich color. I don't really have any rich colors left, uh, but the, the orange is very bright. So if we were going for something like a bright replacement or a bold replacement, because the wine was kind of a bold color, orange might be good. Um, a soft sort of, you know, this peachy color is not bad. And then this is completely out of left field, the mint green. So let me see, orange, 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 peach, <laughs> peach, orange. Uh, this is this is actually green, not gray, Laurel. I know. It, I'm just looking at it. It does look a bit gray. It's actually kind of a, a, a sagey, minty green. It's awful. I'm so sick of looking at it. Orange, 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 mint, orange, 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 orange. Okay, it's going to be orange. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Let's get this one going. Where's the end? Here it is. Glad I caught that before it ran out. There we go. I might just leave that in there for now. And I'm back. All right, gonna get a few more stitches in with this and we'll see how that looks. I want to work over top of those tails. So I'll pull them in here. There we go, hide that knot, lovely. Oh, I think that was the right choice, guys. It's kind of echoing the orange that was in that crazy 1970s self-striping ball of yarn before, oh yeah. Good choice. Good choice. The wisdom of the community. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Deborah's looking for the poll. We didn't do a poll. We didn't do a poll, Deborah. I just asked you all to sort of sort of toss it into the chat. No Mr. and Stitches is uh I can hear Mr. and Stitches busily typing out there, so <laughs> uh-huh. Yes, look, oh my gosh, Carolyn. Thank you, Carolyn. Look at, look at this, I love, I love this. Now you can really see that, that the, here's where the lilac started. So the wine started here, the lilac came in a couple, like a row above it, and now we've got the orange coming in. And doesn't it look like just a continuation of the rest of what's been happening in this basket? This is so neat. Oh my gosh, I love how this looks. Oh, I'm enjoying this so much. Oh my gosh. It's a community built basket. I love it. And it's nice and stiff. My sides are staying up. I'm uh, able to sort of spin it as I work. Yes, much more comfortable these last few rows. Beautiful. And I'm really happy to be using up that orange. I mean, I love orange. Orange is one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color. Um, but I, it's a funny, like that's sort of a size three lightweight ish yarn. And I didn't really have a lot of, you know, opportunity to use it. So I'm glad to get it. I was doing it a moment ago. Oh my gosh, Steve, thank you. Steve. Is that Uncle Steve? That might be Uncle Steve. I think that's Uncle Steve. Thank you, Uncle Steve. wonder how big this is. I should probably measure this. Hey, my little, my little, um, did anybody see when my, my, uh, where did my little, where did my, uh, <laughs> oh, here it is. My clips in here. Did I take it off and just not put it back on? How? Already using the basket? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I'm already using the basket. So here, here is where my row ends. It was Uncle Steve. Thank you, Uncle Steve. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Count 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I am halfway through row 26. This is great. That means I have four and a half rows left before it's time to build in the handles. I am definitely getting, oh my gosh, Connie. I am making my son a crochet Assassin's Creed cross Grafgan blanket. That is going to look so cool. Mr. and Stitches has played the Assassin's Creed game. Yes. Many. Several of them. It is such a fun game. Looks really cool too. That's gonna to be a neat blanket. Yes, may the fourth be with you all. <laughs> Shell, you didn't say anything. You saw my you saw my clip bouncing around in the basket and you just thought, oh well, I'm sure Jade has got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whole yeah. yeah, it's been rattling around in the basket and I had no clue. <laughs> Yes, Lala, thank you for the reminder. Uh, liking the video helps us a lot. It does tell the uh, tell the algorithm to uh, share it 
to other people who might be interested in crochet. It's um, we get a little bit throttled because we're in Canada. And so there's a bit of a there's a geographical algorithm at work as well. Um, it doesn't always rep, sort of recommend our channel to people outside of Canada, uh, which is it's it's not bizarre. I mean, people who are in Germany will get recommended German videos before they get recommended anything else. And Americans, American videos, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, you know, Canada's a small population, relatively speaking. And uh, most of the people that we chit chat with here in our community are largely from the US and Europe um, with a sizable number from New Zealand and, and Australia. So we really are a global village and here. India. And India, yeah, we've got a, a lot of folks watching from India. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're a global village and it, um, it helps us a lot when people sort of like the video and share it because otherwise people tend to, the, the algorithm likes to forget that Canada exists. <laughs> Um, the brand of hook I'm using is a, what is this? I think it's probably an arrow, an old arrow hook. Um, arrow hooks were sold in Canada. I haven't bought an arrow hook in quite a while, but most of my original hooks, when I first started really getting into crochet, were all arrow, because those are the ones that I kind of saw for sale around me the most. Um, then I bought some boy and I bought some baits. Um, and then eventually I bought my clovers, I've bought tulips, I gave the tulips to mama in stitches because I'm a knife grip, not a pencil grip, and those particular tulips didn't really work well with my grip. I tend to love my clovers, they're ergonomic, and, um, but this is a nice big, because this is a nine millimeter, it's light because it's plastic, I don't know if you can hear that, um, and it's uh, it's pretty big, so it doesn't really require the ergonomic handle. And I'm not, I'm not really struggling with it. It's okay. All right. So we'll take another maybe one or two questions, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll take a – if anyone's got any questions, we'll take a couple, and then we'll wrap it up for the day. And we will see you all back here tomorrow morning for the Fair Isle-style blanket. Oh, goodness. What's that? Super Hope! May the fourth be with all in the Zian Stitches family. I love that. <laughs> Yes, may the fourth be with you. And I think I managed to finish. What was this? Was this row 26 I was on, everybody? I'm going to have to stop and count. I keep forgetting. That feels like a good place to call it. Finish the row so that I can start a fresh row on a fresh live stream. Probably, we'll probably pick this up again next week. Um, so you guys can, can come hang out with us tomorrow. We're not going to be live tomorrow. It's going to be the pre-recorded video, but, uh, you're going to want to see the blanket. Do you remember how many rows you finished yesterday? I did six rows in total yesterday, five or six, five and a half or six rows. Um, and I started on, what did I do? Like four or five rows today. I had to pause to tie in a couple six balls of yarn, and six and a half yesterday. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. Um, what am I? 1, 2, 3, so 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6. So I've finished row 26. I have to do row 27, 28, 29, and 30. So four more rows in total. And then I break to do the handles. Then I do the handle row. And then I have three more rows on top of that. And my basket will be done. So I am really looking forward to that. We will pick up the live basket crochet along again next week. Uh, probably Monday, I'm guessing. We'll see. We'll 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 put together the stream and it'll be up and available for the notify me button um, before we get started. But tomorrow is Fair Isle Day. The new video is coming out in the morning sometime. Uh, we're going to try to aim for what we normally get them out. Uh, there were more Fair Isle blankets uh, shown in the community tab today. Thank you so much, everybody who's shared your Fair Isle blankets with us uh, at the Etsy shop. It's been so awesome to see everybody's projects as they've been developing. I just, I, I just keep marveling at how amazing everybody is is taking this project in so many different ways. The colors and the the way that you're putting the order of things and you're adding in extra stuff. We've got, um, we do have some extra, so Fair Isle Style Plus patterns, we're calling them, uh, in the Etsy shop. And there's a free one over on our website on the Pattern Workshop page. It's the um, the Awareness Ribbon. Uh, we have an awareness ribbon graph. So if you wanted to work that into your blanket anywhere, you're more than welcome to do that. 
Um, but uh, tomorrow we will be releasing the May one, and I am so excited about it. I I I can't I can't even. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's it's Mr. and Stitch's favorite so far. And I know it's his favorite because he actually paused when he looked at the blanket and he was like, oh, oh, yes. <laughs> it worked out better than we anticipated. So uh, you're all going to see that tomorrow. And like I said, we'll pick this back up on Monday. So everybody have a fantastic evening. Have a great Fair Isle Friday. We'll see you tomorrow. And then have a wonderful weekend beyond that. Stay safe. Stay crafty. If you need to rest your hands and your wrists, for heaven's sakes, do so. Don't ever feel rushed to try to keep up with anybody. Crochet is a largely a solo game. You're only making it for yourself uh, or as a gift, but ultimately it's something we do for ourselves. So remember to be patient with yourself. Give yourself a break if you need it and um, enjoy it. This is, this, is, this is part of the fun of being alive. We get to be creative and we get to be creative with each other. So thank you all for being here. You guys are the best community on the internet. And uh, I can't wait for you to see tomorrow's blanket edition. Oh, my gosh. I'm just so excited. Okay. Take care, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.